Lesson 4.8, zeros in the decimal product. We will know that we have the correct amount of decimal places in our product if we count all the decimal places in the factors. The total of decimal place values in the factors will be the amount of decimal place values in the product. We start to the right of the decimal numbers and count the hops. We learned how to do this in the last video, which is linked in the description. Sometimes we'll multiply decimals and find that the product doesn't have enough digits to place the decimal point. When this happens, we need to insert zeros as placeholders. We have 3 tenths times 2 tenths. We multiply just like whole numbers. 3 times 2 is 6, so we know there's going to be a 6 here. We count the number of place values, the hops. We have 1, 2 in the factors, so we know there's going to be 2 in the product. When we hop, we go 1, 2, and we have an empty place value here. We can put a 0 there as a placeholder. We have 6 hundredths. We can multiply each place value, including the zeros. We can do 2 times 3, which is 6, 2 times 0, which is 0, then 0 times 3 tenths is 0, and 0 times 0 is 0, then add up all the place values. We get a 6, a 0, and another 0. We see the two decimal hops in the factors, so there's going to be two decimal hops in the product. We put them in be the decimal point in between these two zeros. Now, this way is slower because we're multiplying the zeros and we're writing all the place values, and it is accurate. But a faster and accurate way is to think of the basic multiplication facts of 2 times 3, which is 6, and then just count the decimal place value hops. We have 2, there's going to be 2 in the product, and we put a 0 as a placeholder in the tenths place. And we can put a 0 in the ones place. And it's faster to multiply 3 times 2 and insert the necessary zeros. It's always necessary to place a zero in an empty decimal place value position to the left of a non-zero digit. So this is a non-zero digit. It's not a zero. We put this zero here as a placeholder. The zero to the left of the six helps the six stay in the hundredths place. The zero determines the place value of the six. We learned that trailing zeros are zeros to the right of a decimal number. We learned about that in video 3.4, which is linked in the description. Zeros to the right of a decimal digit do not affect the place value of that digit. We have 5 tenths times 2 tenths. We have two decimal place value hops. 2 times 5 is 10. We put two hops into the product. We can say it's 10 hundredths or 1 tenth. We have a trailing zero here. This one is still in the tenths place. One tenth is the same amount of area as ten hundredths. In this equation, we have three tenths times thirty cents. That's three tenths of thirty cents. We multiply just as if they were whole numbers. Three times thirty is ninety. We count the decimal place value hops in the factors, there's three of them, so there's going to be three decimal place value hops in the product. And the product shows thousandths. And since the product involves a money amount, there should only be two place values to the right of the decimal point. That means we would have a zero and a nine. And we can remove the trailing zero. The product is nine cents. We can remove that trailing zero. We can determine the amount of decimal place values that should be in the product before multiplying. This will make it easier to see how many zeros we will need to write between the decimal point and the product as we multiply as if they were whole numbers. We have 2 times 3, we'd put a 6 here. That's easy, but before we begin multiplying this 2 times 3, we know the product will have 3 decimal place values. 
we know the last non-zero digit, this six, will be in the thousandths place. We can put two zeros here as placeholders for the tenths and hundredths. Three hundredths times two tenths is equal to six thousandths. We need to multiply seven hundredths times two tenths. We think two times seven is 14. There are three hops in the factors, so there's going to be three hops in the product. We know our decimal point should be here. We're going to have to insert a zero in the tenths place as a placeholder. Our answer is 14 thousandths. For this one, we have 2 times 40. We can think of this as 2 times 40, which is 80. According to the factors, there should be three decimal place value hops in the product. We would have to insert a zero in the tenths place as a placeholder. But we're multiplying a money amount, and there should only be two place values here for the cents for the parts of a dollar in a money amount, so we can remove this trailing zero. Our product is eight cents. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. Do you remember a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount? We need to find the value of n. So we think of basic facts, basic multiplication facts, and the amount of decimal hops that are in the factors that should be in the product. We have 8 hundredths times 3 tenths. We think 8 times 3, which is 24, We count how many decimal hops there are in the factors. There's three decimal place value hops in the factors. That means there are going to be three decimal place value hops in the product. We're going to have to put a zero as a placeholder in the tenths place. We could put a zero to the left of the decimal point. We have 24 thousandths. Here we have six times n, some number n, is equal to 24 thousandths. We think 6 times some number is 24. Well, that would be 6 times 4, wouldn't it? When we look at how many place value hops there are in the factor that is given and in the product. There's two place value hops in this factor, but the product has three. Well, that means this n must have one place value hop. So that the 2 from here and the 1 from here will equal that 3. The answer, n, must equal 4 tenths. For this one, we have some number n times 7 hundredths is equal to 35 thousandths. And we think 7 times some number equals 35. Well, 7 times 5 equals 35. We look and see that there are two decimal place value hops in that factor, and there's three decimal place value hops in the product. That means to have three in the product, this one must have one decimal place value hop, so we'll have 1 plus 2 to have that 3. So we need to have one decimal place value hop for that 5. That means n is equal to 5 tenths. On an average school day, Emma has 5 cents left over after buying lunch. On Tuesday, she had 6 tenths times as much left over. On Wednesday, she had 8 tenths times as much as on Tuesday. How much money did she have left over from Tuesday and Wednesday? So we think. We need the total amount left over from Tuesday and Wednesday. We can multiply the 5 cents times 6 tenths and 5 cents times 8 tenths, then add their products together. The 5 cents times 6 tenths, we have 5 times 6, which is 30. We see there are three decimal hops in the factors, so we're going to do one, two, three decimal hops for this product, and we end up with a trailing zero and a zero that we insert here because it's money. We can drop that trailing zero. 
We multiply five cents times eight tenths. Eight times five is 40. We have three decimal place value hops in the factors. There's going to be three in the product. And we need to insert a zero here as a placeholder. And we can also drop this zero as a trailing zero because we're dealing with money. Now we have three cents and four cents. We add them together and find out that on Tuesday and Wednesday, she had seven cents left over. We had to multiply two different times and then add those products together to get the answer. Tala's house is seven tenths miles from her school. Her grandmother's house is four tenths times as far as her school. How far is the grandmother's house from Tala's house? We think we can multiply seven tenths times four tenths. We think of the basic multiplication facts. Seven times four is 28 and count the decimal hops in the factors to insert the decimal point in the product. We have 28 hundredths miles because there's two hops. We can put a zero here, can't we? So the grandmother's house is 28 hundredths miles from Tala's house. Make sure however many decimal place value hops are total in the factors will be the amount in the product. And as I always say, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in the correct column. If you click the description, you'll see a link to PayPal and Patreon to help support me and my dogs and to thank me for helping you. That was our last lesson for chapter four. We're gonna do chapter five next, which is all about dividing decimals. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.